This is Michael W. Ford. This is Dragon of the Two Flames, Preview 3. And we're nearing uh, the date of its publication. And out of all of the grimoires that I've had the uh, challenge of working on, developing, practicing, living and breathing uh, for a set period of time, Dragon of the Two Flames, or Tunanu Isatu Lahu, is probably my most exciting and rewarding. When I took on this project, something that I felt in an initiatory sense I had to do, um, and that was kind of gained through divination uh, workings with my daemon, Azal Usel, um, and so forth, I wasn't even uh, grasping the extent and depth that this grimoire would uh, go into, even uh, more so probably than Mascom Hull. Both will be companions in some ways because they're dealing with the same time periods and neighboring cultures. It'll, it'll provide for the reader and the person interested in Luciferianism and uh, uh, various pantheonic systems, um, a kind of uh, rounded picture of the ancient Near East, the source of this type of magic that we practice today in Luciferianism. With that said, there, for the most part, with Dragon of the Two Flames, were uh, focused from Bronze Age to Iron Age, and then the second half of the grimoire goes through first century Christianity, uh, all the way to uh, Klipoth in uh, medieval uh, Kabbalist systems, just to show you the succession of demons and gods into demons. Um, but with the initial aspects of Dragon the Two Flames, we're dealing with the ancient Near East, the Canite gods, uh, Ugarit, city-state, and that's Baal, Yam, Leviathan, um, Astarte, all of those. And they branch out throughout the Hittite or Anatolian, Hurrian areas, northern Syria, all the way to uh, Ramesses uh, in Egypt, near Memphis, uh, where Rapesh and uh, Astarte and Anat uh, manifest. Um, for that part, we stop kind of right before Assyria or, or Babylon, just because Mask and Hole picks up there. But this grimoire goes into such depth with the etymology, the, the types of uh, uh, temples, the old archaeological temple structures that were built for these gods, the ones that, that you know as demons today. I'm giving you um, their uh, really historical uh, concept of the uh, temple cult. Now, the importance of that is not just for history. I'm not trying to re-present to you history. I'm trying to give you a complete circle of knowledge to then use Luciferianism to do what you will in your life. Now, with that said, it's about initiation. Now, there are two types, as I've mentioned before, in initiation. You have the people who practice Luciferianism as a accent uh, spiritual path in life. You're not really focused on initiation or the rigors and exhaustive nature of it. It's not in you. you. You will develop a communication with your daemon on an instinctual level, might not go beyond that. You do these solstice rituals, these celebrations, gathering with friends. You live your life, have your family do whatever you do. That's fine. But then there are the few, like myself, who have the demonic malamu black flame to go upon that, that uh, really in-depth, life-changing uh, initiatory practice of the Black Adept. For both types, Dragon of the Two Flames will be a uh, plethora and, uh, of, of knowledge and different turns you can take in your magic. That's what I wanted. I wanted a full, encompassing uh, type of honoring of the old gods. So, when it came to the art of this book, um, I knew I had to go uh, 
to the level of what I'm writing, to what I'm presenting in prose and, and in uh, etymological discussions of the deities, I had to show the gods as they were then, historically, based on their culture and the time periods, how they would look, their different forms with their different uh, epithets or deific masks. So therefore I had a really good artist, uh, Kitty Salamosi, uh, excellent artist, over 55 pieces of different uh, deific masks, old gods, demons. You've got some amazing pieces there. You have Adam Iniquity's work, which uh, Goetia of Shadows did a great job. Nestor Avalos, uh, who worked uh, and did Shadows of Azathoth, my horror fiction piece. And then Carl Enney, an old Black Order of the Dragon uh, uh, brother and uh, Black Adept, who supplied the Beelzebub original piece and some other things that uh, will manifest. So there's so much for the Black Adept. But here's the next step. To work properly in this current, you have to develop your concept of the daemon and the black flame. So what is Malamu? As in Mascom Whole, Malamu is made of two words, compounds essentially. Me, which is uh, divine essence um, and vital energy. So me, um, Sumerian, uh, and then you have Lam, which is to burn or fire. Okay, so in the Akkadian version of Lam is Asatu, which in Ugarit is Isatu, uh, which is the fire, one of the two flames, a demoness of Yamnahar Leviathan. So, the divine radiance of Malamu is the black flame illuminated. It is that divine radiance that you build with your ritual and spiritualist works. Uh, Luciferianism, I have a core concept that if you apply it in Dragon of the Two Flames, you will reach your goals that much faster. And with more of a knowledge and a centering about what you're doing in Luciferianism. In Luciferianism, there are specifically two types of magic um, and ritual that are performed um, by the practitioner. Uh, these are modeled and uh, kind of succeeded from uh, what you're going to see in the uh, uh, history records of the ancient Near East. In Dragon of the Two Flames, I present really two different types that have a lot of subcategories and different aspects of magic. First is the type of magic uh, with the purpose of uh, obtaining something, uh, fixing something, averting a, a problem, or to gain something, something material or, or a, a need. That type of magic, sorcery, uh, traditionally is, was performed and conducted by priests in the temple cults who would make sacrifice, libations, incense offerings, invoke the god, have a treaty with the god, it kind of recited as a incantation, if you do this for me, grant this for me, then I will give you this, I'll offer you incense and I'll dedicate uh, a temple to you. That type of practice um, is still uh, utilized in Luciferianism now, um, but not in the sense that we think of it literally. We don't go through temple cults, obviously. We do it as individuals, and you do it in the way that you're affecting that power within yourself. You're bringing that out through your own workings. Um, so when you invoke a, a deity for a specific purpose, you're actually um, making that kind of offering what the medieval Christian demonologists would call a pact with that specific deific mask and that activates in your subconscious a new daemon to set in motion the wheels for that to manifest. But once that does manifest, then you have um, a thanks where you offer incense and have the temple image or do something in honor of the deific mask. 
that type of magic, sorcery, does not require intensive dedication. All it requires, um, it doesn't require initiation, it doesn't require becoming. It's the path of, of living your life, enjoying it, and, uh, you know, using magic as you deem fit. And then, uh, there are, is, is the other path of magic that is kind of the school of what I was brought up in, which is self-initiation, becoming. And not everyone's going to have that. Few are going to have that. It's going to be more of a self-driven process. So not every Luciferian is going to be seeking to bring forth the daemon and do their will to, to no end. Uh, some are just going to want to and feel that attachment to the spirit, have a slight connection with their daemon and live their life according to their desire. Dragon of the Two Flames, of course, in its foundation and uh, primary focus of the grimoire is the old gods of the pre-Christian pantheon. However, uh, part two of the grimoire, uh, uh, as well as the specific training steps on ritual, performing ritual, the tools needed, how to make them, uh, how to consecrate them, uh, it goes into um, first century uh, up till pretty much medieval uh, Kabbalah, Klipoth, demonology, and the purpose of that, and it, let me say it really goes into areas that I've not put in, uh, revealed in other books, <clears throat> is the succession, the transition from a specific deific mask or a god demon um, that is eventually downsized into just a specific demonic power that is kind of a a ghost of what it used to represent. Now these types of spirits um, are still valid and as modern Luciferian practitioners we have the uh, I guess the benefit uh, and we're lucky enough to have all the different cultures that we can pull from on any specific uh, deity uh, in ritual. So for instance if you're working with Lucifer, you're going to be invoking a general deific mask of rebellion, uh, self-knowledge, uh, self-directed will, uh, knowledge, but also applying knowledge to obtaining power in your life. Now that Lucifer is a kind of composite deific mask of Ashtaroth, Astarte, uh, Ashtar the Strong, Chemosh, um, Baal to an extent, Baal Zebub, uh, the god of the lofty habitation, um, and there's so many uh, other ones, Samael, uh, Azazel, uh, Azazel's in the Grimoire, um, and some different uh, historical, mythological, artistic representations uh, of the uh, deific mask, and kind of some uh, etymological um, foundations that he's related to the god of death, Mott, and uh, some of the Greek Hellenic uh, Seleucid kings and so forth that kind of grid, uh, present that image of the adversary. So Dragon of the Two Flames has the succession through demonology and really how you can use the demonic or theorionic mask for uh, self-empowerment. In delving into the darkness, you find your strength and power, because that's really where initiation lies, is getting into the darkness and using it to the best of your, your uh, advantage in the conscious world. How does one go about summoning, raising, communicating with the daemon? The daemon is the genius, the instinctual will, the true will, what people call the holy guardian angel, except in Luciferianism the daemon has a strong Hellenic or Greek influence from the daemon, Roman from the uh, imperial cult of the genius, of the emperor. You take that and you, you look at the individual in Luciferianism and you say, I want to visualize 
my daemon, which is essentially when you think about what does that look like, your daemon is never going to be a deific mask that already uh, exists. I have a close, very close, initiatory, um, uh, how can you say, experience and uh, interaction between uh, Astar Chemosh, Chemos, um, and Yam Nahar Leviathan. Some, and I've seen it before, initiates will say, my daemon, it's come to me, is Lucifer. Can't get any more general than that. So let me say that I guarantee you, your deific mask, that deific mask is not your daemon. When you first grow energized with excitability, enthusiasm, very intensely through magical practice, um, your mind finds associations with specific gods or demons, naturally, based on your chemical makeup, your physiological, you know, uh, constitution, if you will. So there's going to be certain things that you're drawn to with deific mask or gods. And when you invoke those, you're going to feel, you're going to understand that energy and that power. It's going to relate through you as a temple, a temple of mind, body, spirit. With that said, you might start, because you're so fond of that deific mask and identify with it, you're going to say, oh, my, my uh, true will, my daemon is, is Satan. Well, it's not, and it will never be. Your daemon is uniquely you. It is the higher aspect of your being. How would you visualize your daemon? It may have attributes, forms, part of the energy, part of the essence, thus the attraction, of some of the deific mask. Um, Azal Lucel, uh, it has a couple different uh, inspiring aspects to this, to my daemon. Uh, but it doesn't just stop with the name, it, it is empowered beyond that. When you visualize it, it's going to have physical, like, artistic, symbolic traits of other gods or demons. It's going to have composite forms, it's going to take different shapes for different types of pantheons that you work towards and what you're trying to achieve. I'm showing that in Dragon of the Two Flames, and there's going to be a forthcoming grimoire on the daemon specifically, which we'll explain that in further detail. Take an create an image of what you visualize your daemon to be, which would essentially have your facial features, which you artistically blend in with different elements that are you, that you feel magically. Could be your uh, animal, patron animal, uh, the snake, owl, raven, wolf, whatever that would be. Um, and that daemon is to be viewed, and this is the best way to view it, as yourself in self-excellence. You're always going to strive with the guidance that that instinct brings from the black flame. And as you grow in experience and power, knowledge, and with the experience, wisdom, your daemon will become illuminated more intensely within your psyche. You're going to, in Luciferianism and vampirism within the Black Road of the Dragon, which isn't for everyone, there's a really intense focus on the daemon and the psyche and the merging uh, in the type of, based on the energy of the brain and the brain waves that, the, uh, that we create to uh, retain immortality. Um, so the daemon is not your everyday self. It's not, like for instance, my daemon is not me when I'm getting something to drink, walking across the street, picking a snake up, reading a book, typing. It's not that. The daemon is 
the inspiration to do what I do and to seek um, more towards what I wish to achieve and what I have to do. Everyone's daemon will inspire them differently. Um, it might be low frequency instinctual drives over the years or like with me it could be very intense um, instinctual guidance dreams things that you know you have to do so keep that in mind with the daemon malamu the divine radiance the terrifying radiance spoken of in mask and hole featured in dragon two flames is related there's a process which you know is aromatic yoga it's referred to as tunanu uh, or the dragon the raising of the dragon of the two flames and the two flames are kundalini or shakti this is the only indian type concept in or, uh, or outside of the levant or ancient near east um, brought in to this magical system but it's so potent that i'd be an idiot not to do that working with the seven power centers, the chakras, and raising the fire serpent represented as the two flames, the two uh, demonic goddesses who raise the dragon, which is your primordial instinct, your, yourself, that union, piercing every center of specific power with the seven unclean spirits, who are the seven evil gods in Maskam Hole, creates an empowerment and a charge that you're going to have to experience to believe it, and I challenge you to try it. Um, this will activate your daemon and bring you into close communication with the rituals that you do in the book um, to open those gateways of power for yourself. Some of that is done with vibration and chant. Vibration and chant is very important in that there are specific cult epithets or divine names, titles, in the incantations that when you recite them, you just don't say Tunanu, uh, Stami Lahu. You will vibrate it to yourself as Tunanu Isadhu Lahu. And if you can't do that verbally, you do it to yourself in your head and you see it and you visualize it the same effect will be made that is how you activate those aspects in magic so there's a very interesting process of spiritual development within dragon of the two flames